gave up my boxing dream for my kids, so I'm a hard worker. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top So you better back off, I get lost I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down What's up YouTube? Um, as you can see at the picture, this is my first pro fight It was my debut I went pro with Nate Campbell. It was in 2014, March. Fought in Sandiston against a guy named Josh Ross. But that's not where it all began. Um, I first started boxing in 2007. Uh, I joined the Navy. Uh, me and some guys, um, we were just doing it for fun. We'd be in a room if we had a problem with somebody or just for fun. We put the gloves on and we'd spar each other, and um, you know it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, later on, I graduated from boot camp or A school in 2008 May, um, and came back home. And I got introduced to a guy by the name of Michael. Um, he let me know that there was some boxing in Dothan, and I never knew that Dothan had boxing. Um, so he invited me to, to, to go to the gym, um, and I went there. It was called Wolfpack. Um, there was a guy there that I actually took karate with. His name was Steve Baxley. Um, it was his gym. He owned it. Anyway, I went to the back, and uh, he introduced me to um, a, a man by the name of um, Johnny Trawick. He is a Hall of Fame boxing coach. He trained Byron Mitchell. He was a two-time light heavyweight champion of the world. So anyway, um, I went there to actually just watch Mike uh, spar, and Mike didn't spar. So uh, Johnny asked me if I wanted to put on the gloves. I sparred three of his guys, went through them pretty easy, and then he put in uh, Stefan. He was a Golden Glove boxer at the time. Um, I didn't know anything about him. Stefan McIntyre, professional fighter. Um, at the time, we were both amateur. Well, he was amateur. I was. It was my first time. I got in there with him. First 30 seconds, I had him in the corner, beat him up pretty bad. And I took a half step back, and Stefan caught me. Bang. And Johnny Trope said, all right, that's enough. Uh, he didn't hurt me or anything like that, but uh, it was a good lick. And uh, Johnny said he's seen enough. Um, starting out, you know, I only used the left hand. Uh, I felt like the right hand was too far away. Um, so I mainly just used the left, and I was a right-handed fighter. Um, you know, and from there on, that's where it took off. Um, I came to the gym four or five days a week, um, sparred, and trained two hours a day. Um, that's how that took off. So then, fast forward from 2007, uh, I turned pro in 2014, I turned pro with uh, Nate Campbell. He was a three-time world champion or a unified world champion, lightweight. Um, I don't know if y'all know him. He's out of Jacksonville, Florida. That's who I went pro with. I used to stay at his house and train at, at times. Um, I used to go to Roy Jones Jr.'s house, train with him, fight his fighters. Uh, Roy Jones Sr., I'd go to his house and spar some guys. Um, um, but anyway, I turned pro 2014. My first fight was against a guy out of Monroe, Louisiana, Josh Ross. Fought him in Sandestin on the undercard of Nate Campbell. Um, it ended up being a draw. The guy, I think he only hit me maybe twice the entire fight, ran from me. Um, anyway, it was a good fight. Learning experience. Um, the second fight, I ended up fighting in July. They called it July Bama Brawl. It was a guy named John Wampish. Um, it was his 12th fight, and it was my second pro fight. Um, this guy fought Gary Russell Jr., his fourth fight. 
I didn't know anything about him. Nate, Nate wouldn't tell me anything. I fought him. Uh, I busted his nose in the second round. He only hit me three times, and it's because I tried to uh, bait him. I stuck my head out. Uh, I was trying to do a half step rock back like Floyd does and catch him with the overhand right. It didn't work out, but it, he only hit me with three jabs. Um, never hit me, never did anything. Uh, they made that a draw as well. Um, before I turned pro, I fought in the amateurs a lot coming up. I fought with various people. Um, I'd go to fights, Evander Holyfield would be there. Um, I fought on the same card as Caleb Plant. Um, he was an open fighter at the time. I was novice. Um, we both won uh, Best Boxer of the Night trophies. Um, my last, no, my next to last amateur fight, it was my 13th fight. It was his 203rd. I fought Ryan Martin, who is the WBC champion of the world. Um, I also fought, um, I think his name was uh, Mikhail or something like that out of Georgia. He was ranked very high. Um, I fought on the same card and pro-wise with, uh, um, what's his name? Eric Walker, who was a WBC champion. Jamal Harris, who trained with uh, Roy Jones Jr. Um, trained under Mike Coker as well. Um, had a lot of experience around me uh, coming up before I turned pro. second professional fight um, I had a daughter by the name of Aaliyah K. Mizell. Um her mom's water broke at four months uh, we got admitted to a hospital she was on bed rest and she had emergency c-section at seven months um, my daughter was born premature two pounds five ounces uh, we spent five months in the hospital um, I had saved up, I had left my job in 2014 to pursue my dream of boxing. I had saved up a year's worth of savings. Um, being as though I had my daughter, um, my dream got put on hold. Um, all my money went to bills and stuff like that because I wasn't able to fight or train. Um, after we left the hospital, um, we went home. I turned into daddy daycare because I didn't have a job at the time. Boxing was my job. Um, I watched her every day. Um, being as though she was premature, we didn't want her in a daycare. And her mom went back to work. Um, so, that, I mean, that's how the, the dream stopped. Um, the motivation to start back training after watching my daughter all day uh, wasn't there. Sitting down all day um, watching her, you just, you didn't have the motivation to get up and do anything. She, um, so the dream just kind of faded away. It got put on hold. You know, I'd go to the gym and, and spar the guys every now and then. Um, and they would always ask me to come back. The coach would ask me to come back. Um, but it, it, it never happened. It was just a, a what if, and it, it still is a what if, you know, because I, this, this wasn't the life for me. I'm supposed to be somewhere on TV. Uh, doing this for the world, um, but now I am a raising nine dad, and I think this is what was supposed to happen. Um, and my first ever dream, even though my dream was boxing, was to be a dad. So uh, my dream came true. I get messages or people hit me up all the time when they see me out. Hey, aren't you that guy that used to box? Or uh, something to that effect? Or are you training or what gym are you at? Because we have no gyms here in Dothan. All the ones we had either closed or went somewhere else or the guys left and moved out of town. Um, so I get I get parents hit me up saying, hey, can you train my kids? Or, um, hey, when you, when you figure something out, let me know. Um, and current boxers that used to box or that are still pursuing the dream, amateurs, will hit me up and they'll say, hey, how's your health? Um, I had no disrespect or anything. And uh, I'll say, ah, you know, I'm not in the gym, I'm not working out, or I'm just focusing on family. And they're like, man, it's a dream of mine if you could get in the gym, in the gym with me and just spar, show me some things. Um, 
So I've been trying to get back in shape, um, work out when I can. Mainly I've just been working out with the kids and the princess always comes outside like, hey, why aren't you working out too? Um, and my excuse always is, uh, if I'm working out, I can't watch them and make sure they're working out because they'll try to cheat me. So I, I'm trying to push them as hard as I was being pushed as a kid. Um, but yeah, um, I get hit up all the time about boxing. Um, and uh, yeah. So now that boxing's in the past, and uh, almost all of Dotha knows that I used to box because I fought here. Um, every time I run into somebody from school or somebody that knows me, they will always ask, hey, are you still boxing? And, you know, you want to lie and say, yeah, I'm still boxing, you know, but um, I always say my, my same answer every time is I only box when I have to now, and it, it makes them laugh. Um, uh, everybody still thinks I'm that guy. They still think I can fight. They still think I can fight. Um, do I? forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until then, we're Raising Nine. See you next time.